What's up, guys? Welcome to a brand new Movie Importance Flashback Reviews, where I take movies from the past, break them down, and tell you what I think about them. If you like what we see, of course, hit the subscribe button, join Movie Important, hit that notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next, and of course, comment below on any video that you watch my channel. So, in uh, the year 2000, 20 years ago uh, this month, uh, we had a film called Boiler Room come out, and it was directed by Ben Younger, who unfortunately hasn't done much since. Um, this movie, I have a lot of love for. It was a movie I saw in the theaters. It was a movie that I just... Have, it's an underrated movie, so I really enjoy it. It's almost like a guilty pleasure, I guess you could say. Um, but it's a movie that is very similar in tone and nature, but not as excessive as Wolf of Wall Street. And the reason for that is because this movie is very inspired by Jordan Belfort um, and what his nature and problems that he had. And it's about this character named Seth Davis. And Seth Davis is played by Giovanni Ribisi. And basically what happens is... Uh, Seth Davis owns an illegal casino in his apartment. He's dropped out of high, a college and he's basically helping college kids, you know, find downtime and stuff like that while making lots of money. His dad, who's played by Ron Rifkin, is a judge and they, it leads into problems. You're running an illegal casino, you're going to affect my judgmentship, and it becomes a kind of black sheep scenario where Seth Davis is the black sheep. His father is very headstrong, very kind of authoritarian and he is very angry with his son he's like why did you drop out of school why are you gambling why are you doing a legal casino it becomes a problem you kind of see his point but because of the nature of who he is and how he acts towards seth davis you kind of not root for him you kind of like are angry at him and it's the nature of the problem with his character is he's a little too excessive in his role but you kind of see where he's coming from so as that says so as that storyline kind of plays out through the whole movie we get a knock on the door and the knock on the door is from two characters that become major. Well, at least one of them becomes a major character in the movie. Uh, Seth Davis, I don't know if it's his friend or somebody he knew through college. Uh, Jamie Kennedy's character basically brings a character played by Nikki Cat, who is Greg. And they basically play a hand of blackjack or whatever. And then they explain to uh, Seth Davis, they're like, look, what you're doing here is very illegal. We have a way for you to make legit money, lots of money. And of course, as Seth Davis says in the beginning, you could either be slinging crack rock or you could be have a wicked jump shot. So basically saying you could be like the low, lower level person making no money, or you could be that rich person making a lot of money. So he takes the jump shot version and he goes to this place by J called JT Marlin. The problem with this uh, stock firm or whatever you want to call it is it's in the middle of nowhere. It's I think in New Jersey is uh, I think Seth Davis says. And it's filled with a bunch of really young people. You know, the stock market, stock market exchange is usually they're more of a, they're more younger, older than 20s, early 20s, late 20s. So there's already warning signs that Seth Davis is not really noticing at first, but as his narration plays out, you kind of, he kind of starts figuring things out. And he basically is put into this group of people that are just young people. They are always on drugs. They make a lot of money, but they don't know what to do with the money. And they are put into this room with uh, a person who is played by Ben Affleck, who plays Jim Young. And Jim Young's like the recruiter. He's like the very aggressive recruiter, kind of like Alec Baldwin and Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. And he explains to him about what this is, what you need to do, very vulgarly and stuff like that. And this is where we meet Vin Diesel. This is where we meet, of course, the Nikki Cat and Jamie Kennedy come back. This is where Scott Kahn comes into the mix. And we start getting integrated into this world of basically con stock market job. And this is when the movie just kind of completely goes and just like completely goes 100 miles per hour. And we start learning about how greedy people can truly be. And JT Marlin is run by JT Marlin, who is played by Tom, Tom Everett Scott. And he's very influential and he's very he, he can get you on his side because money talks and you know money walks and so he basically this character of Seth Davies gets integrated his family is excited for him but he becomes skeptical as he finds out that the stock they're pushing is not only not real but it's being fronted by jt marlin himself so it's basically almost like a pyramid scheme but in reverse so jt marlin is using his friends he's giving them money to basically boost up these fake stocks and they're basically stealing money from people you know there's several times in this movie where 
they are talking to people and they are finding ways to con them out of millions, thousands of millions of dollars. And it gets to a point where Seth Davis is getting so good at what he does that he eventually finds himself basically conning out a normal everyday job father out of his life savings for a house. And that's when it comes to a head. That's when he starts really figuring out that this, nothing about this is on the level. You know, he, he comes across this character who he had, who's his love interest, who's uh, Abby, who's played by Nia Long. And they kind of just start to, do, he just starts kind of seeing everything. He sees the, like the empty warehouse buildings that, he, that are claimed of the companies that they're showing stock for. They see the, he starts seeing like what JT Marlin and his uh, compliance, compliance officer are doing that if they get caught by the FBI, they are able to shift themselves out of the way so it kind of looks like a you know ghost vanish job and stuff like that but that's what this movie is in essence doing is telling us about the cautionary tales of what greed can do to someone and what greed does to people and when the fbi gets involved when they take down you know seth davies and abby and then eventually jt marlin it just becomes a whole complete mess and it's a very sad scenario because what seth davis thinks he's doing and what he wanted to do is do something right, do something good for himself, for his father, his family, to prove that he's not the black sheep of the family. But he, he, he continues to do the same problems over and over. He's doing illegal stuff and he's not thinking about what he's doing. And what's, that's part of life and how we do things is we don't think about it sometimes what we're doing and how it affects the whole and how it affects the public. And when you start getting involved with the FBI, when you start getting involved with the legalities and legal nature of the whole stealing from people in the stock market it becomes a whole mess and i just i really like that for this type of movie i mean i like wolf of wall street a lot i think it's a great movie but this movie boils down what in essence of what wolf of wall street is doing but it does it more simpler you know the characters are more toned down they're simple yeah they gamble in bars they get in fights they get on drugs they drink they have cars that are really expensive houses are really expensive but it's a very very toned down version of that movie and it's really interesting to see what people will do for money and the characters in this movie are you know they're great you know this is early ben diesel before fast and the furious this is giovanni ribisi you know like i said after saving private ryan uh we have tom ever scott who kind of fizzled out as here or there and then we like i said we have scott con and jamie kennedy who were who they are and you know it's just i think it's a good movie i think it's a fun movie I don't think it's an easy movie to watch because of the stuff they're doing. I think the nature of the fact that this is a movie from 2000 really shows you some of the, the stereotypical natures of the 2000s and 99, 2000 era with like the homophobic slurs and the homosexual uh, stereotypes and, you know, the racist stereotypes, you know, the guys are like making fun of each other by calling them stereotypes. And I don't know if it's really how it is in the stock market world, but I've heard rumors and stuff like that, that there's kind of how they are. Uh, but it's a movie that I really enjoy. I think Ben Younger had a he had a pretty good hit on his hand that was not as well received as it should have been, but kind of developed that call following later on. So yeah, this movie Boiler Room, it's a really interesting movie. It's a movie I kind of wish everybody would see, you know, but the problem is with Wolf of Wall Street, people are going to look at it and be like, this is kind of boring. So I get it. But yeah, it's like I said, it's a really interesting movie to watch, you know, to see how the characters play out, to see how you know, the central core, what Seth Davis is doing, how he has to learn his lesson, how it affects him and affects everyone around him. It just, it's a really interesting cautionary tale about greed. So, but there you go. That's my take on Boiler Room. Uh, let me know in the comments below. If you have seen Boiler Room, let me know what you think of it. If you like it, if you don't like it, you know, I'd be interested to know. Uh, but otherwise, that'll do it. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button, join Movie Emporium, hit that notification bell top to find out what's coming next. And of course, comment below on any video that you watch my channel. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out. What's up guys? Thank you so much for checking out Movie Emporium. I really appreciate it. If you want to, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button and the bell at the top. Find out what's coming next for Movie Emporium. Also, check out these two videos. They're amazing. I think they're awesome. I think you'll enjoy them too. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time.